Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper at Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In today's video, I would like to address when you should get imaging studies for the mid-back and which imaging study is the best to get. Should you get, for example, an x-ray, an MRI, a CAT scan, ultrasound, etc. First, I need to pause to remind you to please like this video and please subscribe to our channel to help us continue to grow and hopefully to reach and to help more people. Okay, let's talk about imaging studies and mid-back pain. First, when we talk about mid-back pain, what we're really talking about is thoracic pain. Pain around the shoulder blade is going to be one exception. Pain around the shoulder blade, even though the shoulder blade does line up with the thoracic level of the spine, is more common to be originating from the cervical spine and just referred to the shoulder blade. If the cervical spine has been ruled out as a cause of the pain, then you can consider the shoulder blade uh, pain as part of the thoracic spine. Thoracic pain in general is relatively uncommon. It accounts for approximately 2% of all spinal pain. But since spinal pain is so common, 2% can still mean a whole lot of people in the general population. When people present with thoracic pain, I'll sometimes get an x-ray of the thoracic spine, particularly in older patients. Now, I don't do this generally with neck and lower back pain. So what's different about the thoracic spine? Well, in the thoracic spine, again, particularly in an older person, you may want to rule out a compression fracture. Compression, fra compression fractures in the thoracic spine can be exquisitely painful, but they can also occur with no initial pain, but then the compression fracture leads to a more slowly developing progressive pain down the line that occurs because the normal biomechanics have been disrupted by the fracture and now the daily life stresses are being transmitted through other portions of the spine, like the facet joints. In a younger person with uncomplicated mid-back pain, I often would not get the x-ray, particularly if the reason for the pain seemed clear. For example, with someone with poor posture or someone with lots of sitting at a desk. If the thoracic pain were accompanied by radiating chest pain or with difficulty with balance, uh, difficulty with bowel or bladder control or weakness in the legs, then I'd want to get an MRI of the thoracic spine. Radiating chest pain, if it's from a pinched nerve in the thoracic spine, is not necessarily such a concerning symptom. But given that it's relatively less common, and given that other medical concerns could cause those symptoms, including intercostal neuralgia or heart issues, for example, I'd want the MRI in order to confirm my suspicion that it was really coming from the thoracic spine. Now, with regards to those other symptoms of difficulty with balance, uh, bowel and bladder control problems, and weakness in the legs, the MRI of the thoracic spine is important to rule out spinal cord compression, which would be a very serious and likely surgical problem. Most people, though, with thoracic pain, you know, just have thoracic pain. The, the thoracic pain is usually worse with sitting, usually worse with using a computer or looking at their phones, all the accoutrements of modern sedentary society. Assuming that to be the case, in an older person, I would get an x-ray, and in a younger person, I probably wouldn't. Because to my mind, the minimal information garnered from the x-ray in a younger person wouldn't offset the very small amount of radiation in the x-ray that we would need in order to get that information. Still, some doctors would just get the x-ray on everyone in order to help them fill out the clinical picture, uh, even though it wouldn't be changing the course of the treatment. Now, as for the treatment, there are a variety of potential causes for mid-back pain. Um, all of them are going to generally be treated initially with conservative care that would consist primarily of ergonomic assessment and improvement and also therapeutic exercises. If the symptoms were to persist despite improving the ergonomics and despite the therapeutic exercises, then the patient may be a candidate for an injection. Generally, the first thing you would want to do with axial mid-back pain that's not getting better with conservative care is to evaluate the facet joints. And the way you would do this is with a diagnostic medial branch block of the facet joints. But before any spinal injection, you would first want to get an imaging study. And that imaging study at that time would then be to get an MRI of the thoracic spine. Now, some insurance companies require obtaining an x-ray 
uh, these days before they'll authorize and pay for an MRI of the thoracic spine. If this requirement seems confusing to you, then good. Your confusion means you're paying attention because it doesn't make any sense to get the x-ray first. Um, and it doesn't make any sense because no matter what you would see on the x-ray, you're still going to end up getting the MRI and the MRI is going to tell you everything that an x-ray would and also a whole lot more. So clinically, it would be unnecessary to get an x-ray first um, from basically every perspective. Nevertheless, having complained about this to at least one chief medical officer at an insurance company, I've learned that it doesn't have to make sense for it to be the official insurance policy. So at the, end of the, at the end of the day, if you want for an insurance company to pay for the MRI and if it's their policy, you may have to get an x-ray of the thoracic spine first. But again, the MRI is clinically what you'll want to get. If you can't have an MRI because of a pacemaker or for any other reason, uh, for example, I had a patient who had shrapnel in their spine from a bullet uh, from World War II, then the next best imaging study would be a CAT scan. A CAT scan gives a very good picture of the spine and the nerves, uh, but it's not quite as good of a picture as for the soft tissue as the MRI. And of course, a CAT scan does have a lot of radiation, whereas the MRI has none. Still, if the MRI cannot be obtained, then the CAT scan is your next best option. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please remember to like this video by clicking on the thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments for me, you can reach me at drcooper at princetonsjc.com or feel free to leave a question or a comment in the comment section. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.